Hi, Leo. Here's your astrology overview for 2024, brought to you by planetswithin.com. I'm astrologer Joseph Anthony. All right, <clears throat> we have a new year coming upon us, and this one's going to be a doozy, as I put out in my 2024 uh, video overview. Uh, this one has a lot to do for many of you that are, are a Leo rising or a Leo sun sign. And again, this is very general overview. Uh, issues relating to career and partnerships. These, this is going to be the theme uh, this entire year. And this is because um, Jupiter is going to ignite your 10th house of career. Uh, so will Uranus but also because Pluto will enter or re-enter Aquarius and your seventh house. So there's going to be a lot of changes to the people in your life and around you, possibly at work or in your business. These are going to be the general themes. Uh, when we do the astrology uh, overview for the year, uh, astrologers usually look at the outer planets from Jupiter out. And so uh, this is what I'm going to go over here in this chart and just give you an idea of what I see. And of course, the eclipses every year are uh, indicators of what's coming. So solar eclipses uh, are opportunities or doorways that open. And then uh, lunar eclipses are doorways that close or, you know, things come to an end or finish up. And so there's two of each this year. And uh, one of them is very favorable for you guys, uh, having to do with the Aries uh, in April. And I'll cover that eclipse as well. Um, <clears throat> and so you've got a monumental year uh, dealing with others. And there's going to be a lot of changes in that department. So let's uh, take, take a look at what's going on. First off, we start off with Jupiter, the outer planet. Uh, as we start off the new year, it is going to be uh, in Taurus, which is the 10th house of career. And I'll cover that. But Taurus has been there for a while now, and uh, since May 16th, and it'll stay there until May the 25th. And these are all the key words associated with Jupiter and Taurus. Uh, and so things having to do with career <clears throat> are going to be for, uh, very much at the forefront as we begin the year of 2024. So January, big year for, uh, you know, uh, moving forward with anything to do with a job, a uh, status, uh, having to do with money matters, you know, one of the things I am seeing in the astrology is uh, definitely financial changes in the picture uh, for many, matter of fact, the world, because we know that the whole financial system is teetering uh, <clears throat> and there's a new one trying to emerge. Uh, and I've been talking about that for a while. But um, Jupiter and Taurus is going to help you enhance a lot of the things that um, you need to take care of in your work or your job. Now, when it enters Gemini, these are all the key words associated with Jupiter and Gemini. The need for communication is going to go off the charts because Jupiter and Gemini loves to express itself. And of course, uh, Leo loves to express itself as well. And so you'll find yourself more active in terms of wanting to engage in conversation and wanting to talk to groups or organizations or friends or make new acquaintances somewhere, somehow. So this is going to be the theme, uh, the second half of uh, the year when Jupiter continues to make its way through Gemini. Uh, and so just jot all these words down or get an idea of what's going on here. Of course, we also have Saturn. Uh, which continues to make its way through Pisces, uh, and this is uh, this has a lot to do a lot to do with karma for many of you. I believe it's in the eighth house, and so Saturn is about uh, restrictions. It's about karma. It's about putting effort in, and of course Pisces is spiritual, mystical, self-sacrificing, compassionate. But these two actually work well together when when uh, Saturn is in Pisces. So all of these themes are <clears throat> definitely elevated here. You know, being more spiritual, enduring more patient, self-sacrificing, being determined, intuitive, understanding. And this will last all the way till about February 2026. So uh, the reason I, you know, we bring this up also is because Jupiter is going to get entangled with Saturn twice this year, towards the end of the year. Uh, actually, in August, I believe it's the first time, and then at the end, in, in December, is the second time. And that's usually a, prig, a pretty big indicator of some sort of change that's going to occur to either your partnerships or relationships on some level. And I'll get to the chart there in a minute. <clears throat> Uranus, that's another uh, big planet that's going to play a major role here. It continues to go through Taurus and your 10th house. 
And so this has a lot to do with change in your career, sudden surprises, revelations, awarenesses, you know, uh, the unexpected. This is all part of Uranus and the energy associated with Uranus. Now, Taurus is not just the material side of life, but it's also about our value system. So many of you may be questioning your own value system, like what the hell is going on? What am I doing with my career? What is happening to traditional business? And this all falls under the umbrella of Uranus making a major and significant change through Taurus and uh, this also has to do with financial systems changing and so they're already in the works if you've been following my other videos uh, you know uh, the BRICS nations already created uh, another uh, currency and about 162 countries have signed on board uh, it's a gold-backed currency please look into it uh, and so this is going to be uh, very important this year as well as it makes its way through that 10th house now, the big news really is Pluto re-entering uh, Aquarius on January the 20th and 21st. And this is going to affect your relationships, all of them, uh, because it's going to go through your seventh house of relationships. So it's going to begin to sol slowly uh, bring in powerful people, bring in people who are scientific, uh, maybe spiritual in nature, maybe different or oddball. Uh, you know, and that's the kind of energy it brings in. But make no mistake, Pluto is about transforming that energy. So uh, for the next 20 years, Pluto will absolutely continue to transform all the people you interact with. And so this is why it's so important to watch where Pluto goes <clears throat> and how it interacts with other planets. So let's take an overlook, uh, an overview of the beginning of the year. This is for January 1st, and just to see where the planets are. And of course, your ruler is the sun, so we keep track of the sun uh, every month. And here it is, normally at this time of the year, in the sign of Capricorn. So it's going through your sixth house of health, service, daily routine, work, and responsibility. And so as it makes its way through here, maybe you find yourself at home taking care of kids. Um, maybe you're, you have a project that you're uh, focusing on. Uh, this absolutely seems to be the theme here. But as we start off the year, we also have Mercury coming out of retrograde. There it is in stationary position. But it's in uh, Venus and Mars and Mercury are all in a favorable position in the fifth house. So you're chopping at the bit to get going and get started, to get do something you know uh, that you want to get in, involved in. We also have Jupiter that's just come out of retrograde in your 10th house of career. So you're either uh, very busy putting together a project or putting together something that's very important to many of you. And so I say go for it. And Saturn is also moving forward in your eighth house. So maybe you're uh, gathering some funding for this project or you're working on finances or investments of some kind as we begin the new year. So, <clears throat> but as we continue, as we go into the middle of, uh, towards the end of January, Uranus begins to wake up and Pluto is entering the uh, seventh house. So here it is on the 21st, it enters the seventh house and it joins the sun. So look for some major surprises right around January the 20th, having to do with relationships. So there could be an announcement, there could be some news, there could be a change to a career status, uh, there could be some changes at work, there could be an announcement with the, with the currencies around the world, you know, it could be any of this stuff. So you're busy with work, because now all the planets are in Capricorn right here by the end of January, so you're busy working and you're putting your effort into doing the best you can, and absolutely, this absolutely looks like anything to do with partnerships. At the same time, Uranus is beginning to wake up. Here it is in stationary position, and it'll start moving forward as well. So this is going to be uh, a very busy month for many of you uh, as we get started right away. Uh, in January. So take advantage of the energy when it's in forward motion. Okay. Uh, these are the major transits that I want you guys to keep an eye out for. <clears throat> and anytime you see Pluto here, uh, or you see a, a Jupiter square like this one here and this one here at the bottom, these are very significant throughout the year. So the first one's about partnerships. The second one here, April the 20th, Jupiter conjunct Uranus in your 10th house of career. Look for surprises in career. Maybe there's an advancement. Maybe there's an opportunity to buy another company. Maybe there's a, a change to the financial system at this point. This is going to be very significant. We have another favorable alignment in May right here, Jupiter sextiles Neptune. This could be, again, another, another announcement about your income, uh, anything to do with money matters, uh, having to do with work. Uh, but I see this more as a positive. 
Then, of course, on the 25th, Jupiter enters Gemini, and so communication starts going through the roof. Uh, this enters your 11th house, which has a lot to do with communication and forward thinking, and so now you're looking at the long-term goal. Another positive aspect is June the 2nd, when Jupiter trines Pluto. Uh, this is going to be from the 7th house through the 11th house. So this could be in very important meetings with other people that are going to be uh, quite beneficial for many of you. So take advantage of that. But the second half of the year, this is where it starts to get a little wonky and tricky. Uh, in July, we have a conjunction between Mars and Uranus. And I have that on another slide. But August, on the 19th, we have the first Jupiter square Saturn. And this could be very significant. Uh, this is from the 11th to the 8th. This could be a change to a financial status, uh, something to do with a friendship or an organization that changes. Uh, again, this could be announcements about the markets and new financial uh, systems being put in place, uh, you know, outside of our control. And so we'll have to keep an eye on this, okay? This is, uh, this is where it gets a little weird and wonky. September the 1st, Pluto retrogrades back into Capricorn and it only goes into Capricorn and it stays at 29 degrees, which is the last degree. And it's really taking on the energy of both. <clears throat> so this is again going back to something having to do with work or possibly health oriented. But back in November, it enters uh, on the 19th, enters back into Aquarius and stays there for the next 20 years, will not go back into Capricorn. So now we have this energy uh, full speed ahead in the seventh house of relationships. And of course, these last two, December <clears throat> December 6th, Mars goes retrograde in your sign in the first house. So you may be kind of in limbo at the end of the, of the year of 2024, trying to figure out what it is you want next, what it is uh, you know, that's important to you. Uh, and of course, the last, uh, towards the end, uh, Jupiter square Saturn as well. Uh, that's going to be the second uh, uh, square between these two, which could cause a lot of pressure. So you could see how this, the, the last part of um, 2024 can be a little weird and wonky. And of course, I, I do my astrology throughout the year. So if you follow me, uh, you know, you have the free horoscopes each month to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Now, again, this is just a general overview. So pay attention to these dates, okay? Uh, the eclipse is very significant because um, anytime we have activity with the sun, which is your ruler, uh, this could be uh, opportunities. Um, and so the first one, March the 25th, is a lunar eclipse in Libra. I will cover that in a minute. I have charts for each one of these. Uh, April the 8th, this is a huge eclipse. It's a total solar eclipse, which will affect the United States. So if you live in the United States, this absolutely will be the second eclipse over the United States in, in about uh, six months to a year. Uh, and this one's in Aries, another favorable sign for you because you're a fire sign. So is Aries. And this is where we get those tricky energies again. September 17th, we have a partial lunar eclipse in Pisces in the eighth house. So there's some something could come to an end with financial matters or completion of a project uh, or a realization of some kind. And October 2nd, we have a solar eclipse in Libra having a, a, to, you know, a new way of thinking and, and putting things in motion. So let's cover some of these, uh, all four of these. <clears throat> Here's the first one on May the 25th. Um, this one's going to be in Libra at five degrees right here in the third house of communication. So this has a lot to do with how you think, how you communicate with others, your partner, your partnerships in business. And so this, because it's a lunar eclipse, it may bring a little tension. It may bring a little discomfort. It is going to be trining Pluto, which is a favorable alignment to the seventh house, but it could be a deal that, you know, ends or a need to the, a discussion uh, that needs to be had over maybe a legal matter, possibly uh, a business matter. Uh, that's what I'm seeing here. Uh, it could be a discussion with a family matter as well over money matters or state or planning for some of you, because there's too many planets in the eighth house of inheritance here. So it really depends on your own actual birth chart. But again, this is very general, and that eclipse is going to highlight something to do with others. Now, here's the big one. Uh, this one is a total eclipse, solar eclipse, which is a doorway op of opportunity right here in the ninth house of higher learning, expectations, travel, uh, philosophy, religion, politics. This all falls under this umbrella. It's going to be at 19 degrees of uh, Aries, so whatever that is in your actual birth chart, that'll be the area that gets lit up. And so <clears throat> what we're seeing here is the possibilities of learning something new or experiencing something new, even maybe traveling. 
um, you know, understanding philosophy, understanding politics at a deeper level, understanding the meaning of your life. Uh, this is all a possibility here with all this energy being activated. And this, by the way, will last all the way through the entire year. That's how eclipses work. Uh, but Mercury will be retrograde. So don't, uh, you know, don't force too hard uh, the energy that's uh, not flowing or you may be revisiting something in the past uh, in your mind, you know, trying to figure it out. It could pertain to work as well, too. Uh, Mars is the ruler of this chart. So it, it is in the, uh, um, the eighth house. So it could have something to do with the past, could have something to do with some sort of karma, too, because it's closely aligned to Saturn here. So this could have something to do with money matters, inheritance. It could be uh, someone in your life is leaving, <clears throat> you know, whether they're moving away or maybe there's some financial matters that you're having to deal with here. Um, that's what it's indicating uh, to me in this eclipse. But it's definitely a new door doorway that's swinging open. Then we have <clears throat> um, the lunar eclipse in Pisces, once again, activating this eighth house of death and rebirth, transformation, psychological change. It's going to be at 25 degrees. So 25 degrees of Pisces will be conjunct Neptune. Now, this could be a little sad, out of the ordinary, depressing. And I wouldn't normally say that, but it is going to be squaring Jupiter and it will be opposing the sun, uh, you know, opposing the sun. So this is a giant T-square that's being active here. And again, it may not be something in your own personal life. It may be something that's going on in the world at this time, as I've tried to predict and, 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 and put out there that the, this fall, we have some weird uh, cosmic energy coming in from space, and we could have solar events that take place that really uh, grab our attention. So we'll see, how, we'll see how it plays itself out. But in your own personal life, uh, this could be uh, a massive change in somehow uh, having to do either with finances or belief systems or someone's health because it's in Virgo and Pisces. And of course, Jupiter being in the 11th house. So there's a lot of communication around this um, lunar eclipse that you need to pay attention to. Uh, the last eclipse of the year, which is going to be a solar eclipse in Libra, once again activates that third house. Uh, I believe this one's at 10 degrees. So you'll be seeing opportunities to communicate, to get involved, to express yourself. Maybe you're writing or blogging at this time and you're needing to share ideas about what's going on and what your thoughts are about what's going on. And so uh, talking to partners of all kinds will be very important. Uh, and you'll be making new friends at this time as well because it is a solar eclipse in Libra. So there's definitely an indication here of, uh, like I said at the beginning, changes to relationships uh, and uh, dynamics to work or business. These, are the, these seem to be the general theme for many of you. <clears throat> now, here are the retrogrades for the year. And the first one's not as, as important. It'll be moving direct in Sagittarius. Again, another favorable sign for you guys. So this is about getting some clarity, getting the momentum going as we begin the year of January. But this one is very important. April the 1st, we have this retrograde in Aries. So again, this could be a bit of a push and pull, uh, something from the past resurfaces that you have to deal with. But at the same time, a doorway to move forward is opened that you need to take advantage of. Uh, August the 5th, this is around you know, the Leo time. Mercury turns retrograde in Virgo, uh, questioning uh, finances, investments, uh, self-worth. There could be stuff related to health matters, or it could have something to do with health care um, or, or the, the physical side of life, you know, uh, like selling off property or selling off the things and goods. Uh, that you may be questioning uh, that you've held on to, to too long. And then the last one, November 25th, Mercury turns retrograde in Sagittarius. And so <clears throat> this has a lot to do with, um, you know, projects from the past, situations from the past, friendships from the past that you'll be thinking about or uh, reaching out and, uh, you know, connecting with these folks. Uh, it could be also having something to do with your children because it is the, in the fifth house and uh, it's a retrograde where maybe you're helping them in some way if you have children. So uh, that's going to be the general theme with the retrogrades. <clears throat> now, these are the dates that I want you to keep an eye on. You could jot them down or take a screenshot of them. Anything in red is very important. So you want to keep an eye on those dates because there could be significant events on either side of these uh, dates, usually a week or two on either side because uh, it activates the energy as it comes in and then it slowly dissipates the energy about a week later. So here's the first one, January 21st. Absolutely want to pay attention to that. That has to do with partnerships. Um, we have Mars conjunct Pluto, again, having to do with partnerships in that sixth house. So very important. Here's that other one, March <coughs> square, uh, Mars square Uranus. 
this one's a very important one as well because I do believe that is in uh, Mars will be in Leo, and so it's squaring Uranus. So there could be some issues around work and uh, you know wanting to change in some way. But here, April the 8th, the solar eclipse in Aries is opening up a major doorway. Uh, April the 20th, the Jupiter conjunction in that 10th house of career, absolutely going to be very important. And once again, on May the 13th, the sun, your ruler, conjuncts Uranus and Taurus, absolutely very important. So we want to keep an eye on those dates. And then, of course, we have the Jupiter entering Gemini, not a big deal, just making it more exciting and more mentally stimulating. Uh, favorable time when Jupiter uh, trines Pluto. But again, as you can see here, the second half of the year, very tricky energy coming in. Mars conjuncts Uranus and Taurus, once again, having to do with career matters. And then on the 19th, that Jupiter square Saturn, again, uh, this is heavy pressure, heavy energy coming in. Uh, that's what I'm seeing here. Um, and then, we, of course, we talked about September 1st, Pluto going back into Capricorn. There's the eclipse. Here's the other eclipse. And then uh, on the 11th, Pluto starts to go direct. So we get a little breathing room here as it tries to move out of your sixth house and then eventually moves into your seventh house, which could be very positive. And then, of course, the towards the end of the year, there's a bit of a slowdown. The energy is getting a little weaker and wonkier because of Mars going retrograde in Leo. So you may be questioning where you're going next. Okay, that's very typical when Mars goes retrograde in, you know, one sign. And then, of course, <clears throat> the last, uh, the last uh, square right here with Jupiter and Saturn is a heavy one. Okay, so it looks like we're winding down the year with some heavy, wonky energy where there's, there could be some uncertainty in the mix having to do with uh, what do we do next. That's the kind of mindset I'm seeing here. And again, it could be nothing that you're doing. It could be something that's happening to society at that time. So we're going to have to keep an eye on all of this. So, But remember, you know, as I say in all my videos, and this is what I say to myself all the time, I realize I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. And the more you understand this, the more you say it to yourself, the more you recognize that you are not your body, your mind, your job, your title, any of that stuff, the more you become centered in who you are, which is heart-centered, spiritual, a spiritual being having this experience in this physical suit. We just happen to be going through a massive transformation right now. It's an energy transformation. There's all kinds of science to prove it. So uh, always meditate on this and, uh, you know, get you through everything all the time. Anyway, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, share, uh, and follow me on social media platforms. I'll do my best to keep everyone informed. Have a great year, Leo, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye for now.